I love making family recipes because that's really why I fell in love with baking in the first place. In fact, when I was in pastry school, I actually wrote my final senior thesis on heirloom recipes, recipes my family had passed down to me. And my brother Jason even drew pictures of some of the recipes, including our favorite cinnamon rolls. Hi, I'm Erin Jean McDowell. I'm a cookbook author, recipe developer, and food stylist specializing in all things baking. And I'm so excited today to be making my cinnamon rolls with bourbon icing. I'm pairing it with a vanilla bean boulevardier, which is a twist on the classic cocktail made with Maker's Mark 46. I grew up in a food loving family. And as far as I can remember, all different kinds of homemade baked goods have been a part of our gatherings. When I was younger, my grandma was sort of the maker of the cinnamon rolls. My mom has certainly made them many times, but I will take the cinnamon roll crown whenever they will pass it to me because I just love making them and I love sharing them. And these cinnamon rolls are particularly special because this version actually also has a reduction of Maker's 46. It's gonna start with a little bit of warm water add a tablespoon of instant yeast. I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the surface of the water. Then I'll stir that together and let it sort of hang out while I get some of the other ingredients ready. Next, we'll add the bread flour. If you only have all-purpose flour, you can still use that here. The dough is just gonna be a little bit stickier, but it's still possible. Now we have a couple of special ingredients. We're going to add dry milk, powder. This is like a secret ingredient for making the cinnamon roll dough extra soft and fluffy. And even though it's different than what my grandma would have done, I know she would fully approve because the dough is so soft and so supple. Now we're going to add a little bit of granulated sugar and one and a half teaspoons of fine sea salt. We'll add a couple tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. I also have some milk here that I've warmed up. It's 175 grams of whole milk. I'm just gonna pour that in. I just warmed it up so it feels warm to the touch. Then my little Midwestern ingredient here is I'm adding a couple tablespoons of sour cream. This just gives a tiny bit of tanginess to the dough and of course a little bit of added richness too. It's one of those things you wouldn't be able to taste that it was there, but you would be able to notice its absence. So it's important to leave it in. And then finally, we just need one large egg. Okay, that's all the ingredients for our dough. We're gonna start mixing it on low speed for a few minutes until the dough comes together. Then we'll raise the speed and mix it a little bit higher for a few more minutes until the dough is very smooth and starts to pull away a little bit from the sides of the bowl. It's looking really good. Let's take it out. Just gonna transfer this to a bowl so it can rise. It needs about an hour or an hour and a half to get noticeably puffy. What we want it to do is almost double in size. I'm just gonna form it into a little bit of a ball here. And then I'm putting it into a greased bowl. So let's give it a cover. And then while it's rising, I can get started on making my filling so that we're ready to assemble these rolls once the dough has risen. Let's start making the filling. It's super simple to make, but there are a couple family secrets in here. Uh, the first is to use dark brown sugar. And you can use light brown sugar if that's all you have on hand, but dark brown sugar has a higher proportion of molasses, that natural uh, molasses that's there that they're removing when they make white sugar. So dark brown sugar has more of it than light brown sugar, and it gives these cinnamon rolls such a delicious caramelly flavor. We're also gonna need, of course, a good amount of cinnamon, a tablespoon of cinnamon. This is another little family secret. My grandma and actually even my great grandma and my great great grandma had a couple special recipes where they would add just a little bit of nutmeg into the recipe. And it has a little bit of an old fashioned taste, like it reminds me of the taste of an old fashioned donut. And I love to put it in almost any kind of baked good I'm having in the morning. And even just the smell of it, when I'm grating it. It reminds me so much of my grandma. So a little bit of nutmeg in there too. A half teaspoon of fine sea salt. It's so important in baking that you're still using salt. We think of this as sweet stuff only, but we're not gonna taste any of those delicious flavors without a little bit of salt in there to help us out. So I'll give that a stir just to mix everything together. Then we're gonna add six tablespoons of melted butter to bring this to kind of a spreadable paste-like consistency. I'm just gonna set this aside and I'm gonna go see if my dough has risen enough. If it has, then we're ready to assemble our rolls and that's one of my favorite parts. 
Okay, look at our dough, it's so beautiful. You can see it's risen to the top. It's actually touching the surface of my wrap here. Let's put a little flour down. I love the texture of this dough because it's so soft. I can start the shaping process just with my hands. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a rough rectangle shape so that it's gonna stay as a rectangle as I keep rolling it out. I'm gonna roll it out to a rectangle about 12 inches by 20 inches. So 12 inches wide and 20 inches long. I usually suggest focusing on the length first and then getting the width right because the width is gonna keep adjusting as you grow, get it longer and longer and longer. Would you look at that? It is perfect, but not this way. <laughs> Just love when I get it right the very first time. It's so satisfying. Okay, it's looking good. I always think it's a little easier to roll cinnamon rolls with one of the longer sides facing you. That way you can just kind of work with it really easily. Otherwise you kind of have to twist your body. So that's what I'm gonna do here. If, if depending on how you rolled it out, just switch it so that now it's the long side is facing you. So I dolloped my filling all over and I'm just gonna work to spread it into a fairly even layer. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is one of my favorite parts in the assembly is just making sure there's like cinnamon in every single bite by spreading it all over the inside. And for me, this is where some of the memories of baking like really kind of come back to me. It's the way all of this smells, the way the dough feels, there's no better way to tell someone you love them and to make them some cinnamon rolls. And baking things from scratch, you know, really gives you that ability to enjoy every part of the process. And that's really what my grandma and my mom have passed down to me is that enjoyment of the whole process of baking. Nice cinnamon coverage there. Now let's roll it up into a spiral. This is another favorite part. I like to start really, really small because I want the tightest spiral I can get. So I'm just using my fingertips at first to just fold the dough over a little bit and almost pressing it so that it touches a little of that filling and then keep rolling it up. And as you keep rolling it up, you're gonna use more of your fingertips and your thumbs because they're the most gentle. Anywhere it feels a little stuck, just use your thumbs and kind of lift it up. And when we get to the end, I like to then rotate this end so that it's facing up like this. And we'll just give it a little pinch all along that seam. This seal doesn't have to be perfect. It's just enough so that we know they're not gonna come unraveled while we're working with the dough. So now I'm gonna roll this so that seam is on the bottom. And this is kind of a fun point you can sort of use the sides of your hands to adjust the thickness. And what sometimes happens when you're making a roll like this is the ends are a little thinner than the center is. So I can just use my hands to sort of scoot some of that excess out so that we have one nice even roll. So I'm gonna cut this into 12 even pieces and you can do that kind of however you want. You can be real precise and bring in your ruler. I'm just gonna kind of go down the line because for me, all cinnamon rolls are beautiful, even if it's a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. You know, they're all gonna bake in the tray together and be so good. So I just need a greased, lightly greased nine by 13 or any kind of rectangular sort of casserole dish here. I'm gonna arrange these in three rows of four. One thing that I like to do is if you do have any smaller ones, put those towards the middle of your pan. That way they don't get burnt or too brown because they're at the edges, which have a tendency to bake a little bit more than the stuff in the very center. We left little cinnamon spirals on my countertop. They're so cute. <laughs> I love them. They should stay forever. 
Once these are all in your casserole dish, they are needing another rise. My grandma and my mom would probably wake up really, really early in the morning and get all this dough going and make them fresh, which is so wonderful. But I like to work an element of overnight rise into these because when we wake up in the morning, we're ready to eat cinnamon rolls, but we're not necessarily to deal with all the science of baking. So. At this point, you can let these rise at room temperature until they get visibly puffy. It'll take about an hour. Or you can refrigerate them overnight, covered. And in the morning, they will have risen much more slowly in the refrigerator and they'll be ready to bake after you bring them to room temperature. So I'm just gonna cover this and let these rise until they're nice and beautiful and puffy, and then they'll be ready to bake. Okay, these are looking beautiful. Instead of thinking of them as being doubled in size after the second rise, I more suggest just looking for them to be noticeably puffy. They're gonna have expanded a little bit, grown together a little bit. That's really what we're looking for. I've got four tablespoons or 56 grams of melted butter here, and I'm just gonna drizzle that all over the cinnamon rolls. And this is really one of the special things about this recipe because during baking, this kind of sinks to the bottom a little bit, combines with some of the cinnamon, and it ends up becoming like almost like a combination of a cinnamon roll and a sticky bun. It's how we get so much of it to have that gooey center. And then the butter will also help to brown the surface of the rolls a little bit too, so it's serving multiple purposes. Let's go ahead and throw these into a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and we're gonna bake them until they are set on the outside, but still nice and soft on the inside. Let's get ready to make the icing. Now, normally I just make a very simple powdered sugar icing for these, but I wanted to make these a little extra special, you know, especially when you're making things for the people that you love, you really wanna wow them. So in this case, I'm actually gonna use some of the Maker's Mark 46 in my icing as well. But first I'm gonna start off with one of my favorite ingredients, the vanilla bean. I'm gonna cut my vanilla bean in half and scrape all the seeds out. I think a lot of people think of vanilla as a really simple or basic flavor, but in actuality, it's one of the most complex flavors that there is. And I think pairing it with the Maker's 46, they really amplify each other. We're gonna be able to taste all of those beautiful complex notes in both of these ingredients because they're helping each other. What we're gonna do is we're going to make a reduction. We want to cook off some of the alcohol so that we just get all of those beautiful flavor notes that are left behind. It already smells so wonderful, but when we start simmering this, it's really gonna fill the whole kitchen with the most incredible aromas. I'm gonna put it on the stove. Turn the heat on and all I wanna do is bring this to a simmer. Once it's simmering, I'm going to let it simmer until it cooks down by about half. So in my pot right now, I have about an inch of liquid and I wanna see just a little bit less than that. That's a good indicator that we've cooked off the alcohol and we've also concentrated all of those delicious flavors inside. Ooh, that smells good. All that vanilla bean flavor has been infused inside, but I have cooked off the alcohol. So what we're left with is all that flavor of the Maker's 46 without any of the alcohol content. So it's gonna go perfect in our icing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add the reduction first to my powdered sugar. Get all those vanilla beans in there too. And then my key to the best, most delicious icing is also to use heavy cream. Now you can use milk here, anything that you really want to use but heavy cream gives this such a richness, not only in the flavor, but the texture. It's this beautiful, thick icing, and everyone who tastes it always asks me, what is in that icing? And they have no idea it's such a simple icing, so let's whisk it together. And I, I've held back a little bit of the cream just because I like to make sure I've got the texture that I really want, that it's nice and thick. One of the things I love about cinnamon rolls and the icing is that you can really make it just the way you like. So if you like it a little bit more even coverage, like think like a glazed donut, you can make it a little bit thinner. Or if you want it to be a little bit more spreadable and smeared on top, you can make it a little bit thicker. And you can just adjust the consistency with more cream or more powdered sugar as you need to. But I think this is perfect. 
Let's get started making our Vanilla Bean Boulevardier. This is such a fun twist on the classic Boulevardier cocktail. I love vanilla. I'm adding vanilla to this. If you don't have vanilla bean, another great thing to use is vanilla bean paste because you'll still get those beautiful aromatic flecks. That's a little bit easier to keep on your shelf as well. So I've got all my vanilla bean seeds scraped onto my blade there. So I'm gonna start with one part sweet vermouth and one part red Italian bitter. Now that I already have a little bit of alcohol in the glass, I'm gonna add the vanilla bean seeds. Now let's add one and a half parts of our Maker's Mark 46. I particularly love this bourbon because it's finished at the end with French oak staves. That gives it this incredible complexity and these beautiful caramel notes, vanilla-y flavors. It's going to be beautiful in this cocktail and it's going to pair especially well with our cinnamon rolls too. Give it a stir. We not only wanna combine the components of our cocktail, but we also wanna make sure that we're getting those vanilla beans nice and dispersed throughout. As if this couldn't be more beautiful, let's just give it a little bit extra, a little garnish. Express a little bit. Isn't that absolutely stunning? Cheers! Ooh, I can smell my cinnamon rolls, so let's get them so that we can actually pair these two together. The smell of these cinnamon rolls is so special and it really exemplifies exactly why I love making family recipes and recipes that have given my family memories for years and years and years because it just transports you to that place. And the smell is so strong that I can't wait to be at the point of actually getting to taste these cinnamon rolls. So let's dive in. Ooh, and see, look how gooey they are on the bottom. That's that gooeyness I was talking about. Oh. Mmm. They're so soft. They're soft all the way through. That cinnamon and that little bit of nutmeg, that warmth is swirled throughout. And it's these like caramelized swirls as well as all of that delicious warm spice. And with so many of my favorite flavors like vanilla and caramel in these cinnamon rolls, it's going to pair especially perfect with this Maker's Mark 46 Vanilla Bean Boulevardier. They've got those same delicious caramelly complex vanilla notes. It's gonna be the perfect pairing. If you wanna make these cinnamon rolls part of your family tradition, you can get the recipe on Food 52, along with the recipe for this Vanilla Bean Boulevardier. Cheers.